Greetings, Starfighter. Let us talk about the iSpot today and how to use max spoofing to extend its functionality. As designed, uh, the mobile hotspot is only uh, intended to work with iOS devices like the iPhone and iPad. However, uh, that technical limitation is actually what sealed the deal and got me to buy it. I was wondering how they were doing it and how we can get around it. So, let me show you where we are on my Mac right now. We're connected to my home network Wi-Fi at the moment. Down here you can see iSpot is waiting to be used. To enable my uh, MacBook to talk to it, we gotta, we gotta duplicate the Mac address. Every uh, network adapter has an address associated with it, including your, uh, your airport card. So we're basically going to take the Mac address from an iPhone and stick it into your Mac or my Mac on a temporary basis. So the way we would do that is we'll go up here, we'll pull up terminal, and it just so happens I have these commands ready to go. There's two. I'm going to paste them in here. This first command uh, basically takes your airport it leaves it online but it drops it uh, from from the network like it won't connect to any network but it's still active sudo throws you into essentially admin mode so it's going to require your password this is saying we're talking about the airport and this is the disconnect uh, command so I'm going to put in my password done alright so the next step is to spoof the MAC address again I got this copy and paste it in from a text document across the way. Uh, sending into admin mode. Uh, this is the command to work with uh, the network adapters. We're saying this particular adapter, EN1, which is uh, the wireless, EN0 is the physical adapter. Um, and then this is saying, hey, let's talk to the uh, hardware uh, address, and this is the address we're going to use. Enter and then we're done. So you can see the first command did indeed disconnect me. Airport's alive but not connected to anything. Now I'm going to go to iSpot. Should connect. My computer already has the password stored so it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, we'll go into the web browser here and head on over to the iSpot admin screen. Um, this is the address you need. By default, the username and password are admin. Uh, my current username and password are cache, which is why it came right up. Uh, from my home office, I have pretty poor connection, which is why it says weak. But you can get an idea here of what's going on. It's actually a very clean and elegant uh, web UI. It is much nicer than the Sprint MiFi I had, which was ugly and kludgy. And any of these settings can be changed. So. Here you have the SSID. Mine's iSpot. It came as iSpot and it had three characters after that. Uh, the password I changed. You can just go in here. There's that. iSpot. You can uh, broadcast or not broadcast. It is 802.11b or g, not n, uh, which is not a surprise, especially given the price point. You have some basic stuff that you probably will never use. Alright, so enough of that. Let's go to speedtest.net and see what our speeds are like in a very, very fringe coverage area. And this truly is the, the edge of the WiMAX footprint where I am right now. So even on the fringes, I'm getting better than you're going to get with, you know, a typical air card. Um, let's wait for the results to come in. And you can see it has this as clear wire, so I really am on Clear's network. And so it's about 2,500 uh, kilobits down, which is pretty darn good for being on the fringe of the network. 
and that's all it takes to spoof, spoof a MAC address on a MAC. This happens to be Snow Leopard 1064, although we have also tested this on 1062 with no problems. Uh, leave us a comment if you have any issues, and we will figure it all out.